This is Hill 593, part of the battlefield of Monte Cassino. And I'd like to show you, start off with, where the cloud cover is. Look at these wonderful views. And that's a view now to the south. So the Allied armies actually approached from this direction. And coming around here, we have the monastery at Monte Cassino. Now it's around 10 o'clock in the morning. So the view there is to the south east. So this uh, hill is actually, as you can see, it's overlooking the monastery. It's higher than the monastery. And rather than saying that the monastery is the key to the position, I think it's more likely that this hill is the key to the entire position. Although, behind me, there are more hills. Uh, it'll come out rather badly because of the amount of sunlight at the moment. It might be quite dark, I don't know, I can't see. There we have the, uh, Monte Cassino, the, the monastery, which of course was rebuilt after its destruction in February 1944. Now on a day like today, there's a huge amount of cloud cover, but the cloud cover will go. Now one of the problems here in the Gustav line was uh, that there were artillery positions from a height and they could see how people were advancing below. Now below us here is the Liri Valley, which uh, is actually wider and flatter than I, I imagined uh, it to be. But any movement there is going to be seen from up here. And that cloud cover will go. Yesterday there was a lot of cloud cover. I came up uh, the hill uh, for Monte Cassino and it was, it was very thick uh, fog, a mist I should say. And then when it got through it and it cleared and had this wonderful view uh, of the clouds, above the clouds, like today. It's like being in an aircraft. Almost. The only other time I've experienced it like that was when I went up Mount Tede in uh, Tenerife. Nonetheless, this, it, although being quite high up, I can still hear the noises from the traffic uh, below. Monte Cassino is 520 metres approximately above sea level, although the town itself is only 40 metres. So that, the, the mountain goes up 480 metres. Uh, it seems much more than that, though, when you actually come up it. It's very, very steep. Today is the 25th of November, 2012, and it's a, it's a wonderfully sunny day. In May, however, it had been really hot when people came up here, or fight, had to fight their way up here. Let's now have a look at uh, the, the Polish uh, War Memorial, which is quite high, and it's got the names of those uh, people who were killed throughout Italy, which belonged to the 3rd Division of Carpathian uh, Rifleman, I presume, was the best uh, way of putting it. And so there we, there we can see the uh, amount of people killed. They were starting off on the Sangro River, which were battles uh, in uh, late 1943. Uh, and then here at Monte Cassino, which you've got all of these names here. Then the Adriatic Coast, lots of names there as well. Um, I think that really the battles on the Adriatic coast are not really all that well known. Um, I remember when I was in the army and um, was this photo, this painting of the crossing of the Sangro in the, the officer's mess. Um, I can't even remember which camp <laughs> that base it was in. But I don't think in the whole it is all that well known. The battles for the Apennines which uh, took place in a uh, uh, from the autumn of 1944 to the beginning of 1945, and Senio Santerno, Bologna, it was the, uh, the, 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 uh, the Gothic line, which was eventually crossed in 19, 
45, well, let's end of 44, 45. And um, many of these people, okay, they came from the Carpathians, and the, the, the land that they came from was, had been occupied by the Soviet Union in 1939. And by the time these battles were fought, it mu most of them must have realised that they were never going to actually return home, or if they did return home, it was going to be to the, the Soviet Union. Now we can see the, the cross. This monument was actually built in 1945, although it was restored in 1986 by the Veterans Organisation. And in all honesty, I think it's quite well kept. I mean, it mightn't look so well, but it, it is well off the beaten track. It is a little bit of a hike to get here. Um, there is a sort of uh, path up here. isn't particularly nice surroundings.